X-Men issue 1 sees Scott Summers granted the gift of sight by Xavier, thanks to the red sunglasses that the professor gives him. Scott says that the glasses work and Xavier says that he now sees better than most and he has some things to show him. In the present, the X-Men attack an Orchis facility on Earth. Cyclops saves Storm from some Orchis robots as the heroes move deeper into the base. Scott takes on a group of robots, saying despite being the height of humanity's ingenuity, they know they can't stop the mutants. Storm says that man should know when he is beaten, but these soldiers are well trained and won't run. Finding the main lab, Cyclops radios in Magneto and Polaris, who rip open the building as Cyclops tries to cut through the huge blast door the soldiers have locked behind them. Magneto helps, ripping through the door as Dr. Mars is asked what they should do. Mars asks about the redundancy between the forge and the hub, learning there is about an 80% overlap, but Mars refuses to have his men purge the system data and it's better they make the ultimate sacrifice rather than surrendering. Dr. Smythe asks if it will hurt and Mars says that life hurts but he will not let pain stop him from protecting his work. As he injects himself with a serum, the X-Men are attacked by ape soldiers. Magneto fights them as the rest of the team find the stasis tubes containing people. Scott has Storm create them a gateway as they open one of the tubes which dumps out a woman who has undergone a temporal development, turning her into a post-human of sorts. Storm asks if the woman is from the vault and she learns she is but the woman emerged from her chamber before her procedure was completed and that was because there are wild gods loose on the world. As Magneto arrives back quicker than Scott anticipated the post-human teleports away. Magneto wants Polaris to go after her but Scott tells her that's not the priority since they have to go and get the new mutants back home. The team take the mutants home where Dr. Reyes looks over them saying that while they are all healthy she is worried about the trauma they would have gone through being in that Orchis lab. Storm plans on sticking with the two energy based moons they took who refuse to speak but Scott wonders if that's a good idea since Aurora has been going non-stop for a week and hasn't had a break. Storm says that she's tired of fighting but she will never tire of lifting their own kind up and this is what she is doing. The mutants all begin crowding around Magneto wanting to hear the story of how he saved the new mutants. Eric says that he fights so the children don't have to, but it's worth it because of Krakoa and what they have built. He reassures the children that no one will be coming for them there, but if they do, he will stand for them. Lorna says her father is like a young man again as Scott heads for a gateway, telling her that he's heading home since his father is in town and the whole family have come together to welcome him in a dinner. He invites Lorna but she declines since she's still finding her way in the new island. Scott knows the island is something and is reminded of when his son was born and the terror of the world he thought he has wrought on his son and what his son will have to endure. Scott knows he did suffer and there wasn't a thing he could do about it but endure it. He held on and thanks to that he now has a home because he really believed in a thing. Lorna asks if he really does believe in all of that and Scott says he does indeed. At the Orchis Forge, Dr. Devo says Orchis was created to be a doomsday weapon comprised of the greatest human minds, free from warring ideologies. Karima reminds him however they still employ Hydra scientists and hammer thugs but Devo says that they are lesser evils that they can tolerate for the greater good. He looks over what they have created as Karima says that the conflict was unavoidable and Devo knows that thanks to Gregor's report, Karima knew this was coming. The villain says that the signs were all there but Devo says they aren't all gifted with machine brains like she is and they couldn't see it coming. As the sentinels load the coffins of the men the mutants killed on the forge, Karima says that placing the mother mold in orbit around the sun was always going to spark a response from them but Devo blames himself, not Gregor since he designed the uplift of the station and adapted the trial ask sentinel template for a celestial production so all the blame falls on him. The coffins are shot out into the sun as Devo says that many died but losing Karima would have made the experiment pointless. At the summer's house Scott meets with his father Corsair talking to him about the house and how he was asked where he wanted to live so he decided instead of the island why not the moon. Wolverine meanwhile tells Vulcan that he wants his steak rare despite the moon not fully understanding him but out of respect he will give him a medium rare state. Raza and Cable meanwhile talk about their weapons and plan a trade of them as Jean and Chaod get dinner ready. The family and friends gather as Alex arrives giving his father a plant that Scott says is a Krakoan gate and it will allow him to come to the house whenever he wants and all he needs to do is plant it 
in his ship's hull. The family gather for dinner, and later Scott meets with his father as he cleans plates with the strange Krakoan goo that eats bacteria and waste. Corsair says that his son's world has changed and his life has cost them much over the years, but what Scott is doing now, it feels even more dangerous. Scott says that there is no end to the things on Earth or even the universe that will kill the mutants and it will never stop, so he will never stop fighting for what he believes in. He also says that he lives in a world surrounded by people he loves and he's choosing to spend his days focusing on things that make him want to live. At the forge, Dr. Gregor meets with Devo, who knows the Doctor is angry at him. Devo is fine with the scientists anger so long as she doesn't get lost in that anger or lose sight of where they are headed. Devo says that she should have been there when they buried her husband earlier but she says there wasn't anything left to bury as she grabs a red crystal from a machine that she's been working at, telling director Devo that she is a secret and it's that she can bring her husband back to life. X-Men issue 1 continued Hickman's hot streak off the back of the House and Powers of X miniseries and set focus on the Summers family and how Krakoa and the new mutant nation have brought the universe spanning family closer together. I really love the focus on the Scott family and mainly Scott and his family, his close family like Gene and I guess Wolverine is now kind of part of his family which kind of makes sense in a way and I like how they're working as Krakoa's first line of defense against the Orchis and planning little raids on Orchis to stop them. I'm intrigued to see that little cliffhanger ending with Gregor saying she can bring her husband back to life and I'm wondering if maybe they have hacked Krakoan technology that allows him to clone the people like how mutants now do or whether she's developing something sort of similar and they'll end up fighting sort of like an anti Krakoa or something. Very intrigued to see what Orchis is up to in this series and the troubles they will give the X-Men. I'm going to give this issue a 9 out of 10.